The following podcast is a Sempronto Media production. So a lot of people ask, what is the difference between eating disorder and disordered eating? So I personally had an eating disorder from the age of 20 to about 24. I had bulimia and I struggled with it on and off for about four years. And I would just get really stressed. I was always trying to watch my weight. I would deprive myself of all this stuff. And then I would just get to the point where I just couldn't stand it anymore. So then I would just eat, you know, a dozen donuts and just all this stuff and then just throw it up. So it was just a horrible time in my life. And I finally got to the point that I said, you know, no matter what, whether I, whatever I eat, I'm not going to throw up. Like I finally just got to that point where I was like, this is terrible for me. If I gain weight, I gain weight. I'm just not going to throw it, throw up anymore. But then I just got to the point where even though I didn't have an eating disorder anymore in the sense of, you know, I wasn't bulimic anymore. I believe I had disordered eating. And to me, what disordered eating is, if you're doing frequent dieting, you're yo-yo dieting, you're on this one, you're on that one, you've got chronic weight fluctuations, you've got rigid rituals and routines surrounding food and exercise, you might eat a bunch of stuff and then go exercise for two hours, you've got guilt and shame every time you eat, so every time you do eat something, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm a terrible person, you are just preoccupied with food, like all you think about, you just finished lunch, you're now thinking about what are you having for dinner, you are just feeling like you can't eat anything like a you can't eat a cupcake because if you do you're going to eat five cupcakes um you might just have a loss of control around anything you eat like you feel like okay well when i do eat i'm just eating everything but the kitchen sink and so I believe that that is disordered eating. And so one of the things I did was I interviewed over a thousand women and asked them, what did you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner? And part of it was I only wanted to interview people. I asked them a series of questions like, have you ever been on a diet? If they're like, oh yeah, I'm on every diet under the sun. I'd be like, ah, no thanks. Like you're not my interest. Nope. I've never been on a diet. I've been thin my whole life. And then I would really start digging in. And I actually developed a video course where I videoed these women and you can see all their different things. It's so powerful to watch them eat. Even the littlest thing I, I talk about, this one girl who I watched her eat and we both ate at the same time and her spoon on her spoon, she had half of her spoon while filled with soup and mine had a full thing of soup. So she would eat half of the spoon, eat it, set it down, talk to me a little bit. That sort of thing where she was very calm when she was eating, she ate very slow, she was very mindful. And there's things that you just naturally watch of how they eat, and it's super, super powerful. And one of the things they taught me is no one ever said, I do intermittent fasting, not one of them. But I would say, okay, well, when do you eat breakfast? And they would be like, you know, I don't really eat breakfast very much. Like, I might just have a cup of coffee. I might eat around one. I might eat around two. And after so many people kept saying this to me, I'm like, oh, my gosh, these people are intermittent fasting. They're just not eating breakfast. Or sometimes people would say, you know, I always eat breakfast and I always eat lunch, but I'm just not really a dinner person. Or sometimes I eat breakfast and lunch, and then sometimes I might eat lunch and dinner. Just all these different things started adding up. And I would say a good, you know, 70 to 80% of the women that I interviewed were doing intermittent fasting, but they didn't know they were doing it. Hey guys, I wanted to tell you I'm offering a free weight loss virtual Bible study. Now is the perfect time to focus on understanding true hunger and fullness and learn what the Bible has to say about it. All you have to do is go to ChantelRayWay.com slash Bible study. After you sign up, you'll receive a six week Bible study video that you can watch on your own or you can get a small group of people and do it together. That's ChantelRayWay.com slash Bible study for your free six week Bible study course. And Love and that. the thing they did was I call it flexible intermittent fasting is yeah, what they did. Care about that. That's great. You know, because a lot of times with people with intermittent fasting, it drives me crazy because they're like, up, oh, I have to uh, my eating window is from eleven to six. Let's just say that's what their eating window is, or or twelve to six. And at twelve o'clock, they're like, 
setting an alarm. They're like, oh, it's 12 o'clock. Like I need to eat. And, you know, my eating window is 12 to 6. And I'm like, again, here we go with disordered eating again, because the key to flexible intermittent fasting is you have a flexible eating window at the time of when you're going to be eating your meals. The The point is, yeah, I'm, I'm probably eating in a six hour window. But like I said, today, I've got a meeting like normally I eat between 12 and six. Sometimes I eat between two and eight. Sometimes I eat one meal a day. Like it, it all depends on my hunger and my satiety. And so that's what I'm basing my eating on. And sometimes I'm basing it like today, I just have an appointment during my lunchtime. So I'm not going to be able to eat until two, even if I really wanted to, because I've just am busy during that time. But I'm just, it's okay. Like I can wait a little bit before I'm going to eat. So it's just a matter of making sure you're eating when you're hungry and until you're fully satisfied. This has been a Sempronto Media Production.